Welcome back onto the show. My guest today is Pastor Shayo Akitola. Thank you, sir. Before we went on break, mm -hmm. you were sharing with us how you had that divine encounter yeah. at 1.15 a.m. Yeah. Please tell us more about that. 1.15 a.m., God began to speak to me, mm. and God said, I have called you to go on international, mm. international assignment. Mm. And I was like, that time I had no passport. I had nothing to... Without even a passport, without international. Even a passport. God is, but I've learned to... Listen to God. When God, mm. when you when you have nothing but God, yes, you then value whatever God says. You That's don't play nice. around with whatever yeah. He says because you don't have any plan. You B. don't have any other plans. No backup plan. No backup yeah. plan. So I went out in the next the next day, which was a Sunday, mm. and I said to the few congregation, the church I was pastoring, that God said I'm going international. Hmm. Come and see people laugh. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, this guy is now running crazy. I mean, he, what is he talking about? Mm. He can't even afford three square mm. meals and he's talking international. But well, because BQ. God spoke to me, mm. I took a step of faith. Wow. I was going to go to Gambia. Mm. So I went to pay for a ticket to go to Gambia. Nobody invited him in mm. Gambia, but because God spoke to me. Mm. So I went to pay for a ticket. No, you Gambia. don't know anybody in Gambia. No. You don't have any connections. No. Hmm. no, but you know what happened? Immediately I paid for that ticket. ticket. My mom fell ill. Oh. Wow. So, and I had to look after her. So, mm. I took her to UCH in Ibado. Mm. And I had to go and withdraw all the money I paid for my trip to wow. Gambia for her treatment. Mm. So, and I was like, now, Gambia is not possible. It's not possible. So, what do I do? Mm. And then I said to myself, when God says international, international yes, is international. international. Mm. I don't need to fly to Ghana. Mm. So, I just went on the road oh, straight to Ghana. Ghana. And that was how I started my international and ministry. from Ghana, you Ghana, met somebody, God yeah. opened the way. I, I, in Ghana, I went to Ghana, and the place I stayed, the one lady said to me, are you invited here to preach? I said, no. Mm -mm. So she said, why don't you follow me to our church? Mm -hmm. And I went to the church mm -hmm. with her the next day. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I saw somebody that was my friend from Nigeria. In the which, church? Yes. We've lost contact for years. Of all the churches in Ghana, it had to be that It had one. to be that church. And that guy... God had opened doors for him in Ghana. Wow. The second day I got to Ghana, mm -hmm. I slept in the house of the former vice president's wife hmm. in Ghana. And that was from how the story. Boys quarters from boys quarters to, to and God vice just president. took her into and Guess what? I started flying in and out of Nigeria to Ghana. Hmm. And f as of now, just to buttress on what God said to you some years ago. Hmm. How many countries have you have you been to as of today? I as of today I've been to at least thirty six countries in this world. So that boy from last home has now gone into a pastor just like God told you at yes. one fifteen a.m. Yes, yes, yes. Thirty six countries. Yes, thirty six countries. Although. Also, before you left Nigeria, you got into trouble where you were detained. Ah, that's mm. another story I was going to tell you. Mm. Um, the church I was pastoring, we had we just bought a piece of land. We mm. had no money to raise the walls. Mm. So we were meeting an open open open, <laughs> open uh, ground. And one night, we were in the all night, mm. around 3 a.m., mm. ham robbers just came into the church oh. with guns, different sizes of guns. Wow. And I was standing in front. I will never forget. <laughs> we were singing Wonderful Jesus. Oh, oh. Wonder. Even people that were asleep, they woke up and they were like <laughs> looking at me saying, we want to see what pastor is going to do. do. But I don't know what happened. God mm. arrested these ham robbers. They joined in the praise and worship, oh. and they were dancing. They didn't harass nobody. With their guns, they with left their, their guns. guns. No, they were carrying their guns. guns and they started dancing. And they started dancing. And praising God. And praising God with wow. us. And they left. Wow. Little do I know, the police now came around the next day and said, they should, I should come to the station to mm. give a report, report of what yeah. happened. Went to the station. The next thing I discovered, I was locked up myself. Oh. I was detained. But because they thought you had something to do they with said, They said, the... People in the area were complaining that it was the praises from the church, the noises from, from the, the church, church, that doesn't allow them to know where the armed robbers were operating. So that was wow. my offense. So I was locked up mm. for, a, for, for about 24 hours. I was behind bar. Wow. It was really bad. Wow. But that was where I was coming from. Mm. Mm. To God be the glory. Be and the you glory. can still attest to his goodness yes, now. Yes. On guessing to the UK, I know you now have your own... Um, church to the glory of God and you've planted churches but also there was a stage you know you got married yeah. but then that you then had a bit of a challenge after your marriage do you call that a challenge or a very big one <laughs> it, was, it was seven years of waiting hmm. to have our first child mm. we were not we tried everything we knew how to mm. do it um, 
was not just happening. Mm. I remember one particular incident where a lady came to me for prayers. Mm. And I prayed for her. She mm. already had a child. Mm -hmm. She was trusting God for the for second another. child. So I just prayed. And the lady went and expressed her heart to somebody that she's just coming from for, for prayer mm. from Pastor Shio. Mm. And this lady she went to talk to knew that we were trusting God for yeah. our own children. And the, the lady said, wow, how can you go to a man who had no biological children of wow. his own to pray for you to have a second child? Children. And the woman came back to me and asked me, Pastor, is it true? With all that, your efforts Effort, and your prayers, yeah. you had no children. children of your own. Mm. And I said to her, I said, you need to understand, God said, we are going to have children. So we are waiting for, for children. children. We are not looking for, for children. children. There's a big difference. Yes. Hmm. Some people are looking for When you are mm. looking for something, hmm. you may not get it. Mm. When you are waiting for it, it's a yeah. matter of time. Yes. It will There's come. There's an assurance. There's yes. an assurance from God that it will come. Mm. And thank God today, mm. God is faithful mm. to his words. Can I just ask for me, that's a very serious one. That's a deep one. The ability to be able to pray and intercede for people for something you yourself haven't received yeah. for something you yourself haven't also received and i want you to just touch on the how were you feeling during this period and i always like men to share that because it's something we hear a lot of uh, women talking about yeah. but men are very withdrawn when it comes to sharing the experience especially men of god yeah, okay and I want you to just talk a bit about that. Was your faith shaken? How did you feel? I, I, at this point, that the one of the things I like to say mm. is that if I sit down here and I'm telling you that, oh, my faith was strong all the while, mm. I'm just lying. Mm. I'll even say that my wife's faith is, was stronger mm. than mine mm. because mm. there was a time the doctor advised us to go on IVF mm -hmm. and I was like contemplating of going that route. Yeah. But my wife said no. Mm. God didn't tell her to go for IVF. Mm. And I was like, whichever way, I'm mm -hmm. getting old. Let's yeah, exactly. let's have children. <laughs> and, to have children. But, but that was my wife. And mm -hmm. um, I remember those times when we were waiting. Mm -hmm. Anytime my wife probably sees our mm -hmm. monthly period, yes. even if I want to say hello, mm -hmm. she probably think I was angry with her mm -hmm. because it was getting to us. Yes. And more so, we are surrounded. We are pastors. Mm -hmm. We have children all around us. Mm -hmm. When people have children, they will call us to come and name, name their children. I mean, but one thing I've always known mm. is that life is a seed. Mm. You keep sowing. You keep sowing. You keep trusting. You mm. keep believing. Because, uh, and then when God speaks, mm. he makes all the difference. Mm. Once you can hold on to his words, mm. you will see that he gives you strength. strength. But it wasn't that easy. In fact, there was an incident of somebody walking up to me to say to me, he said, I, I know you're looking for to have children, mm. but you know I can give back to children for you without any string attached. Oh. And I said, yes, that was an offer. Oh, yes. a lady came up to you yes. to say that? Yes, oh, wow. And I was like, no. The I different temptations, the yes. different tasks. Yeah. That reminds me of a story in the Bible, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah. it's the other way around. Yes. When, yes, but I said, no. I told my wife, no, I'm not desperate to have children mm. like that. Mm. Whatever God can give to me, can as well stay there to. forever. Yes. I mean, I don't want it. Mm. I mean, Thank God I had the grace to say no. No, yeah. I didn't even try. I didn't even, it wasn't an option so, for me. Hmm. That was just the grace of God hmm. for me at that point. That's what hmm. I would say. Hmm. So we, when, we, when we look at it, we hmm. can always just say, hmm. looking back, yes. God has been faithful. God has been yeah. faithful. And now you've got two, two lovely, lovely, two lovely children. Lovely, lovely children to yeah. the glory of God. Yeah. Also, I know that. You know, hearing all your stories and what all you've been through. Currently, you go around now setting up churches yeah. just to affirm. Can you just tell us a bit more about what you do? Because I want the viewers to understand the extent of God's, um, what he said in your life, yeah. the extent how it is manifested mm -hmm. in terms of you going and planting churches all around. Uh, that, that encounter of 115 AM changed the story of my life. Yeah. Um, I have been to as far as, as been as far as China, mm. I've been to India, mm. I've been to um, Canada to mm. start a church in Canada. Mm. I started a church in Hungary, in mm. Budapest. Um, now we have about three branches in Hungary. Mm. Right. And then by next, awesome. in the next two weeks or so, we are starting another church in Dallas, wow. in, the, in the US. Wow. I currently, I 
coordinate the International Pastors Forum okay. for the New Covenant Church worldwide. Okay. And International Pastors Forum, we've started churches as far as Egypt, mm. Philippines. Um, You've even gone into those places that people would normally yes, not go to. Yes, God has helped us God to has helped get us, yeah. us into that, mm. in those, into those places. I mean, one of the most challenging places to go is India. Mm. I've been to India many times mm. to, because of church planting. To the glory of God. Yeah, to the glory You've of written God. two books, sir. Yes. What were your inspirations for those books as we round up? The, the first one, Stone, is about my life story. Mm. Because there are in that book, I explained there are three kinds of stones. Mm. Stones that you can lift yourself. Stones yeah. that yeah. men can help you to lift. And stones that only God can help you to lift. Very and profound. It, it's a story about my life. Very profound. And the second yeah. one... Um, tied to even the birds we pay. Hmm. I still have something to do about my life. It's yes. about restoration. Yes. When God restores you, when God takes you from nowhere, when it takes you from zero yes. and makes you an hero. Yes. My third wow. book is coming out, which is tied to even uh, the, the king must hear this. Hmm. The, that's the third one I'm working on. Hallelujah. And um, I trust that it's going to be a blessing to somebody. From zero to, to hero. hero. Yes. And that's really your story, that's, sir. That's truly. God is, well, you sh you, you, just before we went on air, you were saying that God said to you that it will make you yes. international. Yes. But you need to do something. I need to tell the world About. that I was nothing before he came into my life mm. and gave me a testimony. So mm. whatever I am today, mm. I do not owe it to anybody except God. Mm. God made me. God has been faithful. He's oh, real yeah. to me. His words are so real yeah. and he's faithful to his promises. Yeah. Many more grants to cover. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. You know. Thank you so much for your time, sir. God bless you. If there's any, anything else I've taken out of this show, it's the fact that from zero to, to hero, hero can only be through God. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so very much. Thank you and God bless you. God bless you. Next week on Story Before Glory. I know that that journey was part of making me to the woman he wants me to be. Yeah. Walked just a few yards and I blacked out. Oh, I started wow. to bleed. Wow.